Hi, I'm Jeff Stokes. Welcome to Jeff's Daily Dose of Encouragement. Today, I want to encourage you about reading the scriptures in context. Now, I'm going to put myself on the, my neck on the line here today a bit, but I'm going to read a, a favorite sort of passage of scripture that people like to use, that Christians like to use, and I put my hand up and say, yes, I've even used it myself. But I have often questioned the use of it because when we read the context of where the scripture is, it perhaps doesn't mean what we think it means. And we do a lot of that. Christians do a lot of that. They just grab a scripture from somewhere and just use it. But is, is it really the context that it was meant for? Uh, and the passage of scripture that I'm talking about is Isaiah chapter 53. And the favorite verse <clears throat> that we love to use uh, for praying for healing for people is, is the one where it says at the end, and with his stripes we are healed. And of course, that is repeated over in uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, where it says, the, it says it at the end of, uh, so that's verse uh, 55 of chapter 53 of Isaiah and over in uh, 1 Peter 2 in verse 24 it says by whose stripes you were healed at the end of that verse but it's often uh, been a difficult one for me and and when I've had discussions with people they've said oh so you don't so you know when I've questioned the use of it they say oh so you don't believe in healing then no I just struggle with the fact that that scripture is used for praying for healing when there's lots of other examples of scriptures and things like that that say of course that Jesus we read the gospels and it clearly says that Jesus healed and so we believe in healing but when we use certain scriptures are we really getting the context for it and in Isaiah 53 of course what's the context that that scripture is in what is the context that the, the, the main uh, overwhelming background in which that script in which those words are contained and of course it starts off and it says but he was wounded for our transgressions bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement the chastisement of our peace was upon him and 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 Further down in, in verse 6 it says, And on him was laid the iniquity of us all, and for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And further down, you shall make his offering, his soul an offering for sin, and he shall bear the iniquities, uh, bear the just he shall justify many and he shall bear their iniquities and so on and so forth he was numbered for the transgressions and and not in not one of those verses does it mention sickness it's all about iniquities transgressions and sins not about sickness the only one that does mention sickness that's translated differently here is in verse 4 it says surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows Yet we are stamped and stricken and smitten of God. And if we look at the use of that scripture, which is repeated again in the New Testament, it's in Matthew 8, 17, where Jesus healed someone, and that's well before he went to the cross. It's He healed someone, and then they said, once he had healed them, and it says, when even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed. That's this is uh, Matthew eight sixteen. They brought to him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. And then the next verse says that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, "Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses." So that's the context, the context of that scripture 
is when he was actually healing people. That's when he bore their sicknesses and carried their diseases. That's when he bore, it says in the Old Testament, griefs and sorrows. But it's me, it's supposed to be in the New Testament, it says in, in, the, in the Gospels, it says infirmities and sicknesses. So that's the context of that. But the rest of Isaiah is talking about sin. And if you go over to 1 Peter chapter 2, and we start off there, and it says there, In verse 19, for this is thankworthy, if a man for conscience to, conscience towards God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it if when you be buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently. But if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even here unto, this is King James, for even here unto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow in his steps, who did no sin, nor was guile found in his mouth, who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed for you were like sheep going astray but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls so you see again it's not talking about being sick it's talking about suffering for sins or suffering because of the sins of others it's not talking about sickness jesus was not sick when he went to the cross he was wounded and bruised and brutally treated, but he did not, he was never sick. He bore our sins on the cross, but he gave us, through the power of the Holy Spirit, the ability to be healed and to heal people. And so that's the context. When we're healed, it means we're healed, our soul is healed. It means we are made whole in our soul. It doesn't mean physical healing. And so there we are. That's the end of my little rant. And that's my encouragement for you today is to read the scriptures in context. That's just one example. There's others that I know that Christians have made up over the years. It's like it's been passed down a traditional story in the scriptures but when you read the scriptures properly it doesn't say it how people say it and it gives it, it changes the whole meaning of the of, of the passage but i'm not going to go into that today so that's my encouragement for you today if you don't know the lord jesus and your soul is broken and you need it healed because it's broken because of sin and if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him and he in God. And if you have sickness in your body, you can trust the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday, today and forever. The Lord Jesus Christ, who walked in Galilee, who walked on this earth and healed the sick, raised the dead and cast out devils, still does it today. And you can reach out to him and ask him, and he can still heal you. God bless you. Have a great day.